Hello folks, this is Todd Coburn of Cal Poly Pomona, Aero 3271, Lecture 24B on Aircraft Load Distribution Methods. So we talked last time about the load factors and the factors of safety. Now imagine we have an aircraft flying horizontally at constant speed, therefore our thrust is completely balanced by the drag and the lift is completely balanced by the weight of the aircraft. While a stable aircraft will have a center of gravity that's forward of the center of lift such that the tail will have to develop a downward force with horizontal constant speed flight, but we can often neglect that to simplify our analysis by just assuming that the center of gravity is there at the center of lift. That would be completely unstable for an aircraft, but it simplifies our analysis. We're going to continue to show our CG is forward of the center of lift in this lecture, but whenever we use it, we will pretend that those are in line. This makes it easy to visualize our loads. When we have ground loading cases, we're actually going to apply the weight at the CG of the aircraft. And we'll also have uh, landing gears and other kind of places where the reactions can happen. So if we want to develop a simple distribution of load for the aircraft, one of the things that we can do is just assume that our load is a uniform distribution of load. Now, it's better to actually analyze for each of the passengers and seats and galleys and labs where they're actually at, but as a rough and dirty quick estimate, especially for preliminary design, just assuming those loads are distributed evenly, is a good approximation. Now, the question is, how is the load distributed in an aircraft? One approximate Rule of thumb for this is to assume that about 25% of the max gross weight is fuselage structure. About 25% is the payload. That's the stuff you're carrying, which could be cargo, passengers, whatever. About 25% is the wing structure, and about 25% is fuel, which is also often usually carried in the wing. We're going to go ahead and use this as our baseline numbers. You can use these numbers in your projects unless you're instructor gives you a more accurate distribution of load for your particular design project. What this means is that we already know what the max gross weight of the aircraft is. Let's say we're analyzing a current aircraft. We can use this distribution to figure out where the load is carried. What it also means is during preliminary design, if we start out by determining how many passengers or how much cargo we want to carry, once we figure out the weight of all the stuff we want to carry, we can use this approximation to go and figure out what the other pieces of structure and the total max gross weight might weigh. Now when we are analyzing a ground condition, we're just going to need the max gross weight and we'll need to know where the landing gears are, that's what reacts the load, and making sure that we're careful to note whether we have one or two landing gears. Like in this case, it looks like we have two gears, but that would be completely unstable. It's probably as a single nose gear and two main gears. We then can draw a free body diagram and sum our forces to calculate what our distribution of loads are. Now the question is, where is the load distributed? Once again, we can actually calculate exactly where each item of mass is and apply the real load distribution. Or if we're in the preliminary design phase, we can just take the total weight. And in this case, it looks like we're going to be analyzing the fuselage. That means that fuselage structural weight and the payload weight would all be spread evenly across the fuselage. Now, this doesn't account for the wings. Those are going to be analyzed separately. Now, one caveat the wings are going to be carrying fuel weight and wing weight and that load is going to be distributed as well on the wings and then that load is also going to go into the fuselage and then be carried in the gears. So actually our load distribution between the forward and aft gear are going to be inaccurate with this approximation because it doesn't account for the extra load coming from the wing. But this can be used to size a lot of our structures and it's a really gross simplification that 
we're going to use in this class. If you know what the max gross weight is, what is the distributed load you're going to apply? That's right, 50% divided by the length of the aircraft, which would be in this case X tail minus X tip. That would be your distributed load. We can then calculate what the reactions are at the wheels. And we can do our shear and moment diagram for the structure. Now we want to analyze for flight. We're going to need to take a similar but slightly different approach. These are the dimensions we're going to need. Once again, the CG is forward of the center of lift, but we're going to neglect that difference. So we then can take whatever our max gross weight is, take half of that, because that's got 25% fuselage, 25% payload, divide by the total length, which is X tail minus X tip. That gives us the distributed load, but this time it's all being reacted by the center of lift. Therefore, we can use this formula. This gives us the distributed load, 50% of the max gross weight, loaded from tip to tail. Now we can evaluate this as two cantilever beams, one forward of the center of lift and one aft of the center of lift. If you split the fuselage there, you can take your two distributions of load. Now the problem is this distribution of load will give you a different CG than the distribution of load that is really on the aircraft. And therefore we can tweak this as we will do on the next slide to get a better distribution of load so that our assumption matches the same CG as the real structure has. So we talked, this was what we applied last time. This is an approximate value which is fine but we can do better than this. So what we're going to do is tweak these distributions so that we get a little better estimate. This is our improvement. We basically are going to go and calculate the distributed load on the forward fuselage using this ratio and on the aft fuselage by that ratio. We now instead of having one distribution of loading for the entire aircraft, we will have two uniform distributions of load. One for the forward fuselage, one for the aft fuselage. And this will give us the same CG as we put in. This is a little better approximation. This is the approximation we will use in this class. Now for the wing we're going to do a similar thing. We first get our dimensions where we've got the total wing span and the wing span of one wing. Looking that we got to calculate what that distance to the root of the wing is where it attaches the fuselage and we can calculate our distribution of load like this. So we've got a distribution of load that accounts for both the fuel and the wing, that's the one on the left, and the distribution of load due to the lift on the wing. The difference between these two will be what loads up the wing. We can then analyze our structure. That means we're going to have a down load due to the structural weight and the fuel weight, and we're going to have an up load due to the center of lift, and that's going to give us a shear and a moment distribution. We can draw the shear and moment diagram for this, and then analyze the wing at any point along the wing. So, we're going to determine our ultimate weights. We did that last time, right? Determining our ultimate weights, our load factors, and our factors of safety. We then estimate the distribution of load to the components. We're going to look at the fuselage and at the wings. We then can analyze those by first computing the shear and moment diagrams and then doing detail analysis in any section cut. We're going to look more at the kinds of analysis we will do on these kind of load distributions in the next lecture. That's all we got. Make sure you watch video 24A on the limit and ultimate load factors and the rocket video back from 3261. It's video 22B. There should be a link to all three of these videos in your lecture posting on Blackboard. Enjoy.